I, I want to share with our, if it's okay with you, with our viewers and our listeners, at a very high level, uh, one of the techniques to help us uh, harmonize our heart and our brain, because it's through that harmonization, that's where we go into our heart and ask the questions uh, of what's right for us. This is where we trigger uh, the powerful states of, of uh, our immune system thrives when we harmonize our heart and our brain. Our anti-aging hormones kick in to a high gear when we harmonize the heart and the brain. So you okay if, if we yeah, uh, if we do some of that? We're, we're begging for it. What else can we say? I mean, go for it, Greg. <laughs> well, we, we've done a little background now. We know we're living a time of extremes. Uh, the old world is gone. We're in a new normal. Uh, we're shifting from a world of separation and conflict to a world of cooperation and, and union. Uh, and that applies to our bodies as well. So if you've worked with uh, the Institute of Heart Math on, on your programs, they have refined in the laboratory into a few simple steps what indigenous people sometimes go through for days in ceremony. Uh, and the ceremony is good, but a lot of us don't have lives that lend itself to us having days in ceremony. So, so the first thing, when we want to connect our mind and our heart together, we have to shift our awareness from our mind into our heart. Uh, and when I ask people to do that, uh, I can see it in an audience. I say, okay, I'm going to invite you to move your awareness, your mind, your heart. People say, okay, okay, we're in our hearts now. But what they really are doing is they're in their mind thinking like they're in their heart, but they're still in their mind doing it. This is the key. I think the hardest thing for people in the Western world, how do you get into your heart? When I'm with the monks and the nuns and the indigenous people, they have the same problem. Lilu. And what they say is this. They say, if you can touch your heart center gently, in a way that's comfortable for you. Uh, that is one of the keys of moving into your heart. Here's the reason why, because your awareness will always go to the place in your body where you feel the touch. So when I'm in the Yucatan, for example, the Mayan people every morning, they wake up and they greet one another with an open palm over their heart. They're calling their attention to the heart. They do this in the Middle East as well. Uh, Buddhists make the prayer mudra like this, and they, they physically touch their heart. That's another way of, of doing this. Or we can simply use a, a finger or two and just, just touch just like this, whatever feels appropriate. This will call our awareness from our mind into our heart. And we generally do this when our eyes are closed so that we are shutting out the diversions and the distractions of the outside world. Uh, but if people do that, they can't see the, the program. So, uh, so this is the first step. You move your awareness from your mind your heart. When you do this, you send a very powerful signal to your body that something has just shifted. You are now focusing and turning your awareness inward rather than focus on the outer world. First step. Second step. Once you are in this space, your awareness is right here. You begin to breathe a little slower than usual. Maybe five seconds on the inhale, the exhale, or whatever is comfortable. That slowing of the breath sends a second very powerful signal to the body. Because the only time, Lulu, that we typically breathe slower like that is when we are in a place that is safe, where we feel safe. So when you slow your breath, you're sending a signal, you're saying, ah, I'm in a place that's safe. And that safety switch, it turns off certain mechanisms in the body and turns others on. It turns off the stress and fight or flight, adrenaline, cortisol uh, production, it turns those off and it turns on very powerful uh, immune response and it opens the door to the next step that we're about to, to experience here. So second step. The third step is once we're in this space, in our heart, breathing slower, we begin to feel to the best of our ability the feelings that send a powerful signal from our heart to our brain. And the scientists at HeartMath have found there are specific words in the English language. So other languages may use other words. But in English, the word appreciation, the word gratitude, the word compassion, and the word care. If we can feel care for anything or anyone, if we can feel appreciation, for anything or anyone, to the best of our ability in that moment, 
if we can feel compassion, gratitude, what that does is it begins to send a very powerful signal from the heart to the brain. It's a low frequency signal uh, optimized at 0.1 hertz. It's a very low frequency. This is the frequency that whales communicate with in the ocean. Uh, it is, you can't hear it, but it is this signal that harmonizes the optimization between the heart and the brain. You have to be in your heart first for it to work. So if you're in your head feeling these things, it's, it, it's okay, but it's not going to have the same effect. So shift your awareness into your heart, number one. Number two, slow the breathing. Number three, feel the feeling of compassion for anything or anyone, gratitude, care, appreciation, uh, and continue breathing for about, about three minutes. And what this does uh, is it sets up, and you can actually measure it, Leo. It's, it's amazing. You can see the waves of the communication between the heart and the brain. Every moment of every day, right now, there's a conversation going on between the heart and the brain. Mm -hmm. And the quality of the conversation is determined by the emotions that we're feeling. We choose the emotions, we change the conversation. And that conversation from the heart to the brain determines what chemistry the brain releases into the body. This is where my work and Joe Dispenza's work and Bruce's work, yeah. heart math, this is where they all come together. So when do you do something like this? You're, you're creating what is called heart-brain coherence. It's a beautiful thing to do before you sleep at night so that your body can regenerate from coherence. It's a beautiful thing to do before you start your day. If you just watch the 6 o'clock news and you're feeling especially stressed, if you're having a difficult day with your husband or your wife or your going to have a difficult conversation in the boardroom at, at work or with your kids. Marriage and family counseling uh, practices, they do this all the time. Military service people coming back from the battlefield to reintegrate into their families and societies. All this is, this is optimizing, giving us optimal access to the neural circuits between the heart and the brain. It's not just about the heart, not just about the brain. I, I've been a scientist most of my adult life. Scientists say the, the brain is where the action is. I've been around new thought, new age, metaphysical people most of my adult life. They say the heart is where the action is. Both of those are important, but they're incomplete until we can marry them together. This is where we find what it means to be human in a way that no other form of life can do. Intentionally, on demand, we can access this powerful, extended neural network so that we are optimized to deal in a healthy way with a changing world. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes up to us how we apply this. Once you're in this space, this is where you ask the big questions of life. Once you're in this space, this is where you access your subconscious mm -hmm. to change unhealthy patterns. And this is where your affirmations have their greatest power. Once you're in this space, this is where your body is triggering all, all of the healthy uh, hormones that, that we were just talking about in, in a, a really nice balance. Uh, and once you're in this space, this is where deep intuition becomes available on demand because we choose to have it. So it's all about us embracing our truest nature, the deepest truth of what it means to be human. And this is how this planet is going to shift, right? Sorry. Well, here, here's, so here, here's, here's the second part. What scientists now have found is that the strongest magnetic field in the human body is in the human heart. And when we do what we're doing now, we are coupling, we are marrying our heart field with the heart field, the, the magnetic field of the earth. Mm -hmm. And when many people do this together, whether it's in a corporate boardroom or it's in an auditorium or it's on a planet, here's what happens. This is so beautiful. When the magnetic fields of the earth are increased, humans become less aggressive we become more willing to cooperate and work together and solve our problems. So we are feeding this field every moment of every day. The question is, what are we feeding it? If we are angry, frustrated, hateful, if we're out protesting against in anger the things that we don't like, we are adding chaos to this field. When we can work from this place to solve our problems, we are actually feeding the field in a healthy way uh, so that we begin to work together. Uh, there was a, a very famous scientist who, who died in 1983. His name was Buckminster Fuller. 
Many people are, are no Buckminster Fuller. And he, he made a statement that I think is so true. He said, you will never, <clears throat> never change the world by fighting against the things that you do not want. He said, to bring about lasting change, find a new way to do what it is you want to do that makes the old way obsolete and the people will follow. And that's how you create change. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. The more we fight one another against what we don't want, we're adding chaos to this field. The more we put our energy into working for positive change and living our lives in a way that we know is true and healthy and honest and cooperation and mutual aid, and people see that works. People say, I want, I want my life to look like that. And they begin living that way. That's how you create the change. And you don't have to fight anything. So I hope that makes sense. That's beautiful.